of this struggle to take our love I need. You came from above, your wings wider than a dove. I need you, I need you. Won't you take me home? Give me wings to fly. We can be alone in the castle in the sky. We can run away. For more music, check out our Spotify and YouTube playlists. Enjoy! going on everybody uh we're gonna get started i'm, I'm not gonna wait too much longer uh, they could just catch the recording but i'm on borrowed time the uh <laughs> i don't know how long my internet's gonna be up so we're gonna we're gonna jump right into it let's uh <laughs> let's do this hold on bam all right here we go <clears throat> how's everybody doing man um let me pull up the chat just in case hey, there's only a couple of us on here so if you guys got anything instead of doing the chat let's uh just unmute yourself and uh and we'll go from there but um it's so far it's been a pretty decent week uh definitely a little bit of frustration i'll, I'll kind of go over the stuff that i got broken even on and uh i'm a little pissed off at the dow jones but other than that uh s p was pretty good today and uh and we'll get into some stuff uh just going into the week right uh i'm, I'm definitely looking at this the odd cash rate um, I, I don't think this is going to change. If you haven't been following the Australian pairs, they've been on a bullish run. And um, I think they're going to continue. I think we may get a little bit of a pullback, but it all depends on whatever the Royal Bank of Australia is going to start to say. Um, and if you go into the, if, if you're, if you're kind of trying to decide on correlation, you know, what, what's fueling the Australian being so bullish, uh, just remember you, you got to split uh, currencies into two types, right? Into safe havens and into uh, anti per diems or, or high beta currencies, right? Uh, they're they're uh, contrasting to each other. Australians, New Zealand's, and Canadians are uh, anti per diems. They're they're high beta currencies. So, you know, right now the current climate is all as well. You know, everything is uh, hunky dory. Everything's peachy. So there's no there's no risk off sentiment right now. And, um, you know, that, that kind of leads to a bullish run on all of these Australian, New Zealand, and Canadian pairs. Um, that's why you're also seeing the Japanese yen crosses. Uh, the, the yen is extremely bearish. That's why you're seeing all these JPY crosses just going on an all-out run to, up to the top. Um, so we'll, we'll get into it. That's really all I'm looking for for tonight. I'm, I'm not actually going to be looking for any trades um, until London session on Australian pairs. I, I just want to let the, uh, you know, the, the fuzz kind of just uh, die out and then I'll, I'll catch a uh, mitigation point. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and then tomorrow night we have some GDP, but I, again, all these GDP data, I mean, everything's gonna be negative. You know, I'm not, I'm not, the market's already pricing that in. I'm not looking too much into that. Why is, man, someone, I think someone screwed around with my filters. 
Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, <laughs> you know, tomorrow is, is going to be a big day tomorrow. Uh, we, we're going to get a little reaction, you know, off the, um, the, the change from last week, the employment numbers from last week. I, I don't think it's going to be significant, uh, but the Canadian is definitely going to move, right? The, 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 and it's not even the, you know, the interest rate itself. Cause again, we're, there's no reason for them to change the interest rate, but it's whatever their risk tone is going to be, whatever they, they decide that the Royal Bank of Canada comes out with, uh, and, and says, you know, what they're going to be looking forecasting wise, uh, that's, what's going to move the Canadian dollar. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and then, of course, we got some PMI data, which uh, surprisingly, the PMI data from yesterday was uh, was very positive compared to what they were forecasting. So I'm, I'm curious to see if this is going to be a beat. If this is a beat, um, we're potentially going to see some of our indices go up. You know, US 30, uh, S&P, th those are going to go up. Um, I, it's not going to affect the U.S. dollar tremendously. It's more going to be for the uh, the indices. Uh, and then Thursday, you know, <laughs> everyone's got uh, this week is is the interest rate re re week and the policy statement. So the euro is going to be affected. And then of course Friday is the big day, man. Friday is the huge day for Canadian and U.S. dollar uh, jobs numbers come out for the dollar, uh, which is definitely going to have some huge volatility. Um, I'm actually looking for some pretty nice setups going into Friday and then seeing if we can catch something uh, on Friday. And of course, Canadian dollar. So I'm, I'm not too focused on the Canadian dollar this week. I was, I, I, and I'll go over UCAD. Um, I've been trying to buy UCAD um, on half lots just because I know it's counter trend because um, I'm a little ticked off that I missed out on the huge sell-offs um, you know, for some shenanigans. So uh, it is what it is, but this week is going to be pretty volatile, which is nice. I like volatility. Last week sucked. Uh, you know, like I, I said last week, I only took like six trades, um, but we'll, we'll kind of get into it. So let's, let's go over it. We're just going to go down the list um, for, so dollar index, right? you can see where we opened on Sunday to where we're currently at. Um, <clears throat> you know, we have been treading down, you could see there is a small little gap up here. So I'll tell you right now, Friday NFP, that's where I'm expecting us to go. I think we, I, I, I personally think that we will, I'll go to the four hour view because it's a little easier. I think we are slowly going to keep coming down into this imbalance for the rest of the week. Um, and then I think Friday is going to set the tone and the catalyst for us to get up and close out this gap. So personally, that, that's what I'm looking at. I'm still looking at bearish dollar uh, going into Friday. Uh, and then Friday's um, numbers, I think, are going to be, um, that's what the market is going to use to manipulate it to come back up and to essentially close out this gap from the sun, a Friday close, Sunday open. Uh, that's, that's how I'm going to play it. Um, kind of like this, you know, how we had... Um, you know, we had this huge gap down here, right? Had this huge gap down here. And then on Friday, what was this Friday at like market close, you know, they just dumped it just to close out the gap. So I'm, I'm anticipating the same thing, you know, the manipulation and, uh, you know, everything's lining up for it, but I am still bearish on this dollar. So because I am bearish on the dollar, let's go to the weekly watch list because I'm bearish on the dollar. You know, I am going to be bullish on some of the cross pairs. Uh, the two that I am looking at uh, right now, uh, GU is my favorite by far, right? Uh, this son of a gun. Um, GU is my favorite by far. What the heck, man? It's like 20 some pips. Um, I'm, I'm personally waiting on this, right? Let it, let it do its thing. You know, I'm not going to chase this, but so... We have been respecting the down candles. Uh, you know, we definitely have some inefficiency down here, some imbalance. Um, but right now, this is this is the play that I'm looking at off this 15 minute candle, right here. That 15 minute candle is where I am looking at playing off of. Okay, you can see we have some nice equal lows, right? A lot of liquidity being built up right here. Um, I don't. Let me see if there's anything to the left immediately. Oh. No, stay, stay. No, I, I don't know what they're reaching for, but let it, I don't care. Let it happen. I really don't want to trade GU at this time anyway. Um, <clears throat> I would, I do want to see it return and run these lows, right? And get into this candle, okay? There are some opportunities 
Um, I think down on the five minute, is it? Let's see. It's one minute. One minute? All right, Mike, thanks. Yeah, off the one minute. Yeah, there you go. If you want to really crunch uh, the stop loss, right, you could see you've got a small little inefficiency here, a little inefficiency there. If you wanted to, you could play it off there. I'm personally just going to go off the 15, uh, just because the last two weeks I've been getting hosed on um, the smaller time frame entries uh, where it's been missing, it's been missing my targets. And, um, you know, I've been missing out on trades. So I'm just going to go play it off the 15, off the 15, right? Stop loss just below the wick. So it gives me a 20 pip stop loss. If you want to play it off that one minute and, uh, you know, if you just want to throw like a half lot in or something like that, I mean, you're, you're talking about a six pip stop loss, which is pretty good on a GE pair, right? Um, now my targets, right? My targets are this, right? We've been, I've been talking about these stupid equal highs here since April 30th, all right? So my targets on GU are going to be running these equal highs. So I'm personally going to be going, my, tar my first target is 1.26450. It's a nice quarter theory number, right? Nice whole number. <clears throat> so off of that, just to take profit one, it's about 130 pips. And off of my 15 minute entry, it's going to give me a six and a half to one ROI. So like most of you know, I only risk 1% on, on every position. So I'm going to get about six and a half percent off of this one. Um, so that's, that's where I'm playing. Now, my overall target that I am looking to take this to is off the weekly time frame, And you can see this huge inefficiency that we still have, right? You can see from here to here, we still have this imbalance, right? Sitting here. And I think this is going to be the area that we see the sell off on GU. Um, I, you know, you can kind of see how weekly time frame right we we are bearish on the weekly time frame and i think if we do get into this weekly up candle i think that's going to give us a sell off now i'm not automatic i'm not going to be selling it from here the stop loss will be ridiculous um you know i mean the stop loss is 387 pips so i'm not gonna be selling it from there um but i will be looking to close out. And I'll tell you right now, I, I will be, I will not take a GU buy if this take comes up here and takes out the, uh, these equal highs. So when you hear me say, you know, it's, it's, it's only going to be valid if it's, if the highs are intact or the lows are intact. So if this runs up through London session and takes out these highs, then I'm not looking to buy it. All right. Because one, it would be a massive break of structure to come all the way back down. Um, and and two, it's, it's taken away my target, right? My target is these equal highs because I want it to grab that liquidity, all right? And I mean, you could see the Asian session manipulation coming 35 pips, you know, in this, in this hour candle. Okay, so that's, that's personally what I am looking at. Um, you can see the, on the one hour time frame, right? this candle has been mitigated out of. So I'm just looking to see if we can get a deeper retracement on it. And that 15 minutes to me is, is looking, you know, key. So like I said, it's a 20 pip stop loss. Uh, I'm looking at an entry right around 1.2516 1, uh, is the entry. Um, I actually, let me move my alert up here. There we go. So that's, that's personally what I'm looking at. Um, I know a couple, couple people, I know Mike's already sent me the same thing when he was looking at the same. Um, you know, I, I charted this up on, I don't know, I charted this up early this morning and I was hoping to get this in today. Um, you know, I was hoping maybe London close or something like that. It just didn't want to come down. So, but this is, this is ultimately what I am looking at. Let me, uh, I'll send you guys this in the chat on GU. I'm looking at a similar thing on EU. Uh, EU has been pretty nice. Um, you know, I've been, I've been buying it for most of the, uh, the last two weeks. Um, so you can see kind of pretty much the similar thing. Um, I tried to sell it this morning. Oh, all right. US 30 Miranda highs. Um, I was trying to sell it to take out the liquidity here and play off of an area here to buy it up and got clapped out on it. So, I mean, it is what it is, you know, nothing, I, nothing you can do about it, but, um, what I am looking at now is off of, I think it's the one hour candle. Let's see. Nope. It is 30 minute. 15. 
It's one of these. Hold on. Why didn't I label the darn thing? I know my internet. Uh, my internet's been really crazy this week. Uh, let's see. So that's the two hour. I do like the two hour open. Maybe it was the two hour open. Each two open. All right, so I do like this two hour open. I'm just gonna go through the time frames and just see if there's anything else that I like on it. Uh, 30 minute, 25. That's what it was. I think it was the 25 minute right up here. Yeah, it was the 25. So I'd rather play the 25 just because it's a higher entry. It's it's like a difference of two pips. Um, let's see, 15, 10. Just seeing if there's anything else. You can see that small little, just on the three minute, right? We got a little bit of imbalance that's left open, right? Right in here. So that's kind of giving me a little extra confluence that I like on this setup. Um, <clears throat> same on the two. That two minute, I think, might even be a nicer setup. Let's just see what this one minute looks like. Yeah, I think I like the two minute candle. Yeah, you can see the two minute candle runs right where the two hour candle is. It's about the same entry, right? Um, so I, I, I really like this setup as well. Now, as far as a stop loss, I am going to be a little more conservative with it, right? I'm just going to run it to the low. So it's about like a 20 pip stop when I was looking at it. You can crunch it down. I'm personally not looking at crunching anything crazy because uh, it's NFP week. I'm going to let them breathe. I'd rather catch the move than get stopped out prematurely. So I'm looking at taking an entry like this, stop loss just below the uh the wick so it gives it about a 13 pip stop right um one of the things i am looking at too is seeing if i do want to short this and <clears throat> what i need to happen is i need a break of structure so you can see i'm 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 kind of looking at this candle right here right that candle right there is the candle i'm i'm eyeing and what I wanted to see was a break of structure. So on the 15 minute time frame, right? We we kind of have just a, a bunch of equal lows here. I kind of wanted to see a break below these areas here, and then that would validate this. So right now I'm not I'm not one bit interested in shorting this from here. Um, you know, you can say that you know we did make a low, a lower high, a lower low. Um, and same thing on the 30 minute, right? You can see here's our high, our low, our lower high, our lower low, okay? Um, but on the one hour, it's it's pretty much just all equal lows. So, you know, whether you wanna say potentially like a head and shoulders pattern, I really don't wanna fall for it. I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna, you know, counter trend this, especially because it's it's really not worth it for me. If it was a clear cut, drop and then a comeback up, you know, it, it would have been worth it. Um, because ideally I'd be looking at a, you know, about a six pip stop loss and then just kind of running it down to here would have made it an eight to one ROI, which would have made it worth it. But I, I need that break of structure. And you can see, you know, on the, on the one hour time frame, we just can't get a candle closure, right? We just can't get a candle closure. So <clears throat> I, do, I do expect this to get run. There's a ton of liquidity. You can just tell that retail buyers are in this, using it as support. Um, I just don't, I don't know where the top is going to be. I don't know if we're going to go up a little higher or, or what, but I am looking at taking this from here, okay? Um, now my targets, the targets that I will be looking at, okay, I want to see what happens. I think, let me just see the daily. I 
that's where I want it to go. Okay. So you see this imbalance right here on the daily. That's, that's one of the key areas I want to go to. All right, that's one of the key areas that I do want to go to. Um, and that would make it a, you know, if we go just to it, you know, nice round number of 12400, uh, you know, that would make it about an eight and a half to one ROI. So that, that is what I am looking to play off of. Um, and I may be interested in selling it if we can run the lows, come back to mitigate out. But I need those, those lows run, you know, um, until that, it ain't going to happen. And then, like I said, going into Friday, I think that's where we're going to get our, our sell off. So that's how I'm, I'm looking to play it. And again, I'm looking at running off of that candle right there. All right. Here, I'll throw this in the chat. That's GU that I'm looking at. Um, UCAD. So this thing, let me tell you. So I got into an entry. So this morning, what time was this? This was 5.30. I got up around like 5, 5.30. So we were down here, right? Um, <clears throat> we had these nice equal highs here. I was looking to see if we we're going to see signs of strength. So when we printed, when we were right here, let's see, when we were right in here, which was just before New York Open, um, I was actually focusing my attention in here. Um, yeah, I was focusing my attention in here and it was off the five minute, you could see there was a five minute imbalance here and off the 15 minute candle, 50% came right here. Okay. 50% came right here. So I was looking to either take an entry off 50% or take an entry off the 15 minute open. Um, you know, there was a little bit of imbalance. We also had imbalance up here. Uh, the reason I decided to take it right was it was going to be a short term, you know, move just to see if I can take these equal highs up here. Um, you know, we, we obviously broke five minute structure, I only threw a half lot on it just because we didn't break 15 minute structure. And if we had broken 15 minute structure, right, if we would have come up here and taken this high out, um, you know, then I, I would have used a better lot size. And of course I had targets up here as well. You know, um, ideally I, I do want to sell this thing, um, but I, we need to get back up into this area here for, for us to sell off. Um, you know, it's pretty obvious where it's going, right? I mean, you've got these, this huge gap right in here that it's going to go and fill. Um, and it's got some nice targets down in here. So this, this has been a long time coming. It's just been very, very stubborn UCAD. Um, so ultimately, yeah, I mean, I did get into the trade this morning. I was up like 20, I don't know, 23, 24 pips uh, off of it. You can see right here, this is where I got in. Got in right here at eight o'clock market open. Um, my stops were just below this wick right here. And then my first targets were these equal highs. So I was looking about a five to one ROI. Um, you know, it did go, I was up at one point like three and a half pips or three and a half percent. Um, I did move in profit and then market just came out and took me out. So um, my rule of thumb, you know, like I was risking, I, th I think I risked 10 pips is what I was risking. So as soon as I went 10 pips in profit, um, I moved to break even and uh, I ended up only taking 1% on it. Um, you know, it is what it is. You know, like I'm, I'm not too disappointed off of it, um, but I would have liked to have taken this up and you, I, I I'm pretty sure this is just going to go sideways, you know, something like this, you know, this, uh, where is it at? This happened, yeah, right here. I was trying to buy it up last week on this four hour break of structure, right? You can see this candle, four hour candle broke all of this previous four hour structure. Um, so I got in over here for a mitigation play and just got stopped out on it. So it is what it is, you know, um, that's what happens when you counter trend. You know, obviously this is a downtrending market. Um, you know, so my rule is when I counter trend, I only do a half of my position. So I risk 1% normally. So in this instant, I'm only doing, uh, doing half of a percent. Um, <clears throat> but for right now, I got nothing on UCAD. You know, I'm just going to let it play out. It, it's obviously re respecting all of these up candles. You know, I mean, you can just see how 
is, you know, until it breaks above here, um, I'm not interested in buying it. So it's just continuing down. Um, if you guys are looking at anything too, you know, just let me know as we go through it. So USD CHF, um, I'm not looking to buy this thing. I'm looking only to sell it and I am looking to sell from one of two places. So um, I am looking to sell if it gets into this gap area up here. Um, if it gets into here, I, I will look for a possible sell, okay? Um, but it needs to get into this area here. And um, I'll, I mean, I'll wait. This is gonna be a, a while to get up there. Um, <clears throat> but I'm also looking at this five minute time frame right here. I wanna see if we can get way up here, this'll be a nice sell. Um, and just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at. So we had equal highs, right? Market came up, FU'd it, right? Grabbed liquidity. So that's the liquidity grab. Came down, never mitigated out, right? You can see we have imbalance on the five minute. Nice five minute candle right here. Okay, five minute candle. And uh, I wanna play off of that. That would be a phenomenal trade. Um, that would be something, you know, this is one of those that I'll twin trade it. I'll, I'll take a position from up here. Um, you know, so we're talking about a seven pip stop loss and my overall targets on USD CHF, my overall targets are going to be right here, 9,500 is my overall target. So you're looking at a, a almost a 29 to one ROI, you know, 29 to one, I'll take that all day long. And the reason I'm looking at that is this is this last point right here where buyers got into the market and took it up. It's a nice round number of 95, um, you know, and on the weekly time frame, we would be looking at, uh, not the weekly, it was a daily maybe. Yeah, we would still be looking to stay above this last down candle right here. So I don't want to go below it because uh, this is going to, this is essentially an order block where seller, they sold to buy, they already mitigated out of it. So I'm just curious to see how far we go down, right? I would have liked if we would have maintained the liquidity here come up and that would have been our first targets, but I'm, I'm looking at 95, the whole number of 9,500. Um, <clears throat> as far as the, as far as the smaller entry, right. Or the, the lower entry, I'm just looking at this imbalance fill. Um, I'm not looking to play it off of a mitigation point. Uh, this stop loss is just going to be, you know, ultimately larger. Um, ideally I'd like to take off the 71, you know, and you're looking at about a 42 pip stop loss. All right. Um, <clears throat> but I'd, I'd rather just take it and be in the trade and get my three, four, five percent, uh, than miss the trade because there, there's no re there's no need for them to come up and mitigate out of here right now. Um, but that's one of those that I'll take a second entry off of it. All right. Um, Euro odd, um, pff, Euro odd, this thing. Um, so I wanted to buy it. And you can see right here, I had, I had an alert set on it. This was, my, this was my point that I wanted. When we were here and we were getting a nice rejection off of this 50% of the five minute candle down in here, um, I wanted to wait for a breakup structure. So I needed price to break above this point and then I would come back and mitigate out of it. Um, so I, I never took an, uh, the entry off of it uh, simply because we did not get the breakup structure. And you can see it's just continued to drop. So eventually, when this thing decides it wants to turn around, we will have some good clear targets to take. Uh, we will have some really nice targets to grab because there's a ton of liquidity sitting right here. Um, but the reason this is just dropping is because the Australian dollar is just extremely, extremely strong right now. Uh, so for right now, I'm just letting it ride, let it do its thing. I'm, I'm not going to chase it. 
Um, you know, we do have some equal lows, you know, sitting down in, in that area right there. So it's about 67 pips from it. You know, I'm just going to let it do its thing, wait for a structure break, um, you know, and then we'll buy it up, you know, but I'm, I'm not, I mean, if, if anyone was trading it off the RSI, uh, you know, if you got in, I don't know, let's just say if you got in when it was oversold down here, you're sitting in about 370 pips of drawdown. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, typically, that's why I don't like to trade off the indicators. Um, you know, they're lagging and they, they really aren't designed to give you a lot of success. I uh, went over to you and you, I've got nothing. I was looking to short it, but it never did break structure. Um, I am just going to continue to let this one ride out. This will get some uh, influence from the Australian news coming out tonight. Um, so I'm just going to see how, how it reacts at, at London session. It does need a correction. So, you know, I, I, I may partake in a sell if a sell is presented. Um, you know, we definitely have some targets that I'd like to hit. Um, but I mean, you can see from, oh, I mean, realistically, we haven't had a, a true correction since these equal lows, which came on May 15th. Okay, so we're, we're talking two weeks. It's gone 460 pips without a correction. Um, you know, so we need, we need some sort of correction. Um, you know, and we've got e these equal lows are on my radar. I can, I can delete this. You know, we've got some imbalance. We've got all kinds of imbalance equal lows. So I, I would like to see, um, you know, some sort of movement back down, at least to get these triple bottoms out of the way, the liquidity out of there so that we can take this back up. Um, so that's one thing I'm looking at. Same thing with the Australian dollar, you know, tons of opportunities down here, but um, nothing about this right here. If you, if you look at the weekly candles, right? Nothing about these three candles right here tells me it wants to sell. Nothing about the daily candles tell me it wants to sell. Um, same thing with AJ, you know, nothing about this tells me it wants to sell. Now I can tell you, I do know, or I, I do feel and sense that there is a significant sell-off coming. Um, I don't know if you guys were on Lex Waves' a session. Let me find it real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is... I don't know if you guys were on Lex's session, I think Monday, when he shared, where's screenshot, there it is. Um, when he shared this, well, I guess I deleted it. All right, never mind. My bad, guys. Uh, anyway, if you, if you do this, right, let me, hold on, let's see. Yeah, so let's just go, let me go to a clean chart, right? Let's do, let me hide the drawings. So this is, Australian and Japanese yen. Let's just go to a line chart and let's go to a daily time frame, right? All right. If we just do that, um, and then let me compare it with uh, the S and P. Oh, where the heck did it go? Hold on. Why is it not loading? Hold on. There we go. Yeah, we just do it like this, the S&P. All right, let's see if this works. For the love, why wouldn't 
Why will not? All right, well, you guys can do this. Um, for some reason, it's not letting me compare them. Um, but if you compare the S&P and AJ, it's actually moving in unison. It's, mu it's moving in correlation. Um, I am looking for a sell on SPX. Um, and I, I think we're going to get that catalyst on Friday, right? I think we're going to get it on Friday. Um, so we may get that reversal coming on AJ as well. But you can see no nothing about this tells me we want to sell, right? Nothing about this. Um, it's just moving with way too much uh, you know, momentum right now. Um, now, ECAD is one thing that I am looking at, okay? ECAD is one thing I am. Uh, let me do, I'm going to have to delete, delete this. There we go. All right, so ECAD, I am still looking at targeting these highs before we go lower. Um, I am in a buy currently, right? So I got into a buy uh, this morning at 10 a.m. off of this break of structure, right? So off the one hour time frame, right? You could see when we broke uh, realistically, when we broke two levels of structure on the one hour, I got into this. Uh, there was a little bit of imbalance here on the one hour. And then off the 15 minute, no, was it the 30 minute? Yeah, there it is. So on the 10 minute, um, I took an entry. Um, off the 50% of this candle right here, right? You could see off the one hour, there was the imbalance. Fit on the 10 minute, there was the last down candle. Um, my stop loss uh, just below this uh, candle right here. So it was about a 22 pip stop. And I am personally just targeting this imbalance candle, right? Um, I, I am not looking to take this extremely higher because I don't think it's done selling off yet. I think we got one more leg, especially, especially since we've got the liquidity sitting right down here. Okay. I think this is going to be a short lived move. I'm just personally looking to take this, like I said, um, you know, for a quick five and a half to one ROI. Um, you know, even if we don't, and I'm only looking to go 50%, which is a nice round number of 1.52. Um, no, just AJ moves similar to SPX, okay? Just AJ. Um, and the reason is it, um, Australian dollar is commodity driven. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, the, it's the strongest high beta currency. So when you're thinking of like risk sentiment, um, you know, the indices run off of risk sentiment. Um, you know, if you, when, you trade the, uh, when you trade the indices, you want to look at like the VIX, the volatility index, right? And um, when I, tr when I, you know, minus what's been going on because of the pandemic, when I used to trade SPX and US 30, I would look at the VIX and I would look at AJ and I would correlate what's going on with the VIX because you want the VIX. When the VIX goes up, we have a sell-off on indices. We have a sell-off on AJ. When the VIX goes down, that means we have a bullish run continuing on indices and we have a bullish run continuing on um, on uh, on AJ, so that's that's how I I correlate the two. Um, so, but on Eurocad, I am I'm looking just to take it up here. Um, you know, right now it's it, dude, this thing's just slugging along all day long. Let's see, I, I mean, I'm only in thirty was it thirty seven pips in profit. Uh, so I'm just a little I'm at break even right now, but um, you know for ten hours it's just been sitting there. So I would like to see a little move up, and I am potentially looking at an area up here to sell back down to target these uh, these triple lows right here. Okay, these are looking just way too obvious. Um, so it's it's going to be something that I'm going to be looking possibly um, if this can get going. Uh, possibly tomorrow, New York session, looking to sell it down. Um, let's see. All right, sorry. Um, UJ just broke my heart again. Um, you know, I was trying to find a buy down in here to take it up, right? So last week, I was looking to sell this stupid thing, 
right? We had these, we had the liquidity sitting down here, ran the liquidity, and I wanted it to come back down, right? Come back down into this area down here and get a nice buy. Uh, I think it was like off maybe the 15 or the five. I was looking at a, I was looking at a buy somewhere down in here. And then I wanted to target all of these equal highs, right? All of these equal highs. So obviously I couldn't work an entry into it. So all of this can just go away. So right now, UJ, and even though the dollar is falling, right? The yen is just so weak that every yen cross is just going bullish, right? Um, like, I, like I showed you guys last week on the yen futures. I mean, just look at the yen futures, right? Yen futures, we had this just tremendous amount of liquidity just sitting right here. We just demolished right through it. Um, I am curious to see a reaction if we do get something going on once we get into this box, right? I was looking at in this box for an area to see if, if the yen is going to start to recover, um, but it is it has just been dropping. So until this starts to regain some of its strength, you're just going to see AJ, CJ, EJ, GJ, everything just keep just going through uh, through the roof, you know. Um, I know there is a, I know there's a harmonic. I, I actually laughed at it. My my uh, somebody had somebody had messaged me and said, "Hey, um, what what do you think about uh, that harmonic on?" Bear with me here. Someone asked me, "Hey, what do you think about the harmonic on uh, GJ? Where is it at? Right here." Bear with me here. Hey, real quick too. If uh, if I get disconnected, if my internet goes down, it's it's normally been going when it goes down, it goes down for like an hour. I'm just gonna call it a night, and you know maybe pick it back up like tomorrow or something. But um, um, we'll find the VIX right here. Um, you you can trade the VIX. Um, I, I, most brokers don't, don't allow you to trade it because the margin requirement on it is ridiculous. Um, but anyway, this, this, this crab on GJ started, this thing started, I think at one point like here and just keeps going up and up. Uh, I mean, all of these harmonics are just hitting stop loss. Uh, well, AN hasn't, but I mean, EJ, EJ has gone through the roof. Uh, AJ just keeps continuing up. So, you know, I personally wouldn't be looking at trading any of the harmonics on a G, uh, Japanese yen pair. Um, I mean, you can see I had, I had this drawn up here, you know, possibly to make an entry off of it. But yeah, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no reason to even look at trading this yet. Um, even on a trend line break, I mean, it's it's just been giving false breaks, false breaks, false breaks. So I I personally am I'm not even looking at entertaining this until that until I see the Japanese futures start to regain some strength. There there's no reason to even look at a at a yen cross to go down. Okay, uh, all right, here we go. Going back to it. So one one thing real quick while this is loading, trading view has been acting a little strange lately, but one thing I, I can give you, especially if you've never traded NFP week, I know some of you guys have, have now have a couple of NFP weeks under your belt. Um, I am very risk on uh, towards NFP week, meaning I, I, I limit the amount of trades I like to take during the week. Um, but all you need is one trade because that one trade may give you 10, 15, 20%. Um, you know, last, last NFP week was an EJ trade that was like a 15 to one ROI. Um, you know, that, that's all I really need. I need that one trade and, and that'll get me uh, what I'm looking for. Um, Euro GBP is one that I'm looking at right now. As soon as this stupid thing opens. Come on.
Oh, for the love. Can you guys still hear me? Am I still am I still on the stream or did the internet drop? I would hear there. All right, all right. Hear you. Is anyone else's trading view just acting like this? Mine's been acting funny the last couple of weeks. Man, I don't know what the heck they're doing. Like I'll uh, I'll mark it up and then go back the next day and like everything is gone. It'll take forever to load. Yeah, you know what? I noticed that today. Like I I I charted up EJ like three times. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, EG, right? Here's what I'm looking on EG. Um, yeah, man, look at this. What the heck? This is the markup I had before, but I'm I'm actually. Let's see. Okay, whatever. So this is what I'm looking on EG, right? Um, I am actually looking to buy this up. So on the smaller time frame, this is an, an accumulation schematic. Okay. Um, what I am personally looking for is I, I would like, you could see, right, we've taken liquidity here. All right, we've taken liquidity. This was that up thrust. Um, I am curious to see, right, if we can come down into this 15 minute candle open. This is a trade that I would be looking to take. Um, it would, you know, relatively small risk, right? Because you know you only need a ten pip stop. Because if it if it goes below this wick, we're we're going all the way down, right? So I am looking for that take profit. One would be to close out this imbalance, right? Let me let me just zoom in. This imbalance off this candle would be take profit one right there. You're already at a seven to one ROI, um, and this does have the you know we we have been on the larger time frame, right? We have been bullish. Now on the one hour, we did break structure, right? You could see we did break below this low, but on the four hour, we have not. And on the daily, we have, uh, we're still continuing in a bullish, you know, trend. You know, you could say that we've, we've broken it here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still looking for a move to fill in this imbalance, right? I want to see this daily candle in balance. And then when we do sell, obviously this is going to be one of my key areas that I'm going to be looking to target, right? I'm going to be looking to target this. So that's, that's how I want to play this. I want to take it. Um, let's go back to the 15. Okay. I want to take it uh, up to this daily imbalance right here. So even if you go to 50%, you're still at about a six to one ROI, okay? Um, there we go. Hey, do you guys hear my kids in the background yelling? No, no one hears it? Good, all right. I won't nope. tell them. All right, good, I won't tell them to be quiet then. All right, so I'm looking to play off that candle right there. Um, and like I said, on the, so on the 15 minute, right, we have broken and taken liquidity out, um, on the 30 minute, it's the same thing, right? You can see we've broken above and, uh, I would like to see, I would like to see that one hour. So that's the only thing. So if anything, I'll tell you right now, if anything, I'm going to be just doing half of my normal lot size, cause this is counter trend trading at this point. Um, if you don't want to take it and you just want to set up for the sell, I'll be looking to take a sell in this area here. Um, I may just take it off this one hour, um, like off of this one hour candle. There's also the, is it a 45 minute? Yeah. This area right here is where I'd be looking to take a sell somewhere in here is where I'd be looking to take a sell. Um, just because this, if you look at this last candle right here, this mitigated out of that last candle. So in here is the last area that needs to be mitigated out of. Um, and then of course, this will, this is going to be a huge run, right? For us to get down to those targets. I mean, we're, we're talking this, this will probably be one of those trades that we're just scaling in and out of, um, for like the good part of, of two to three weeks. 
you know, because this is going to be about a three, uh, 280 pit move. And, you know, just to give you an idea, it took, it took 15 days for it to get up there. So that's what I'm looking on EG. I'll send this out, but that's ideally what I'm looking at. Um, if you want also some, some first targets would be the equal highs right here, okay? Those equal highs would be first target. I was looking to see if this was gonna be our sell from here. Uh, I think it was what, off the 30 minute? Yeah, I was looking, you could see this one hour candle right here. I was looking to possibly sell from there, um, but liquidity got taken and then it just dropped. So had we, had we come up to take liquidity and got a reaction off of there, I would have sold it down, uh, but we, di we didn't get that. So I, I wanna see, at this point, I wanna see that imbalance get filled a little more, all right? Um, this is the play I'm looking at. And then, like I said, I'm just doing 50% of this imbalance uh, like 89,400 would be the nice round number I would take it to. Um, AN is what I'm also looking at, right? AN is what I'm also looking at. Look at this beautiful setup it's doing. Okay, so you right, we have a odd news coming out tonight. You already see the equal lows right here, right? Tons of liquidity sitting right here on AN. Um, when we look at the weekly time frame, this there's no question we're we're bullish, right? We're bullish. We've taken this high. This was the yeah, this was the 2019 high. We've already taken out 2019 high. Okay, you could see all the liquidity that was sitting down here. This grabbed the liquidity. Okay, so if you're looking on a weekly time frame, can anyone tell me what kind of schematic this is? on the weekly like off yeah but are we accumulation or is that distribution accumulation. yeah yeah there you go accumulation all day long right this is your this was your your spring your we, we want to get the test back now i am looking at obviously there's you could see the the imbalance that's here on the weekly and stuff so i don't i don't want i don't think that we are just going to go straight up to the moon off of this weekly time frame right but Daily, we are bullish. Okay, eight hour, we are bullish. I am looking at potentially when we are ready to do a pullback, clearing out some of the liquidity down there that I've already got labeled. Um, but I am, I am looking at this four hour candle, right? The open of this four hour candle. Um, there, if you want to play into here, there's an opportunity. I'll go down in a lower time frame and try to find the candle. But I'm personally just looking at this four hour candle take liquidity and then there is a high from 2019 that is sitting right at 1.0900 i'll be looking to take it off of that okay i'll be looking to take it off of that now again i'm not i'm not looking to enter this until a uh, london session i don't want to i don't want to put a pending order i don't want to do anything with the cash rate statement coming out in like four hours um but now you can you can see right there are some equal lows right here. That's why the stop loss has to be so big on that. And the candle where we got to find an entry is in here, right? Is in here. So let's see if we can find it. That might be it right there. All right, let's see. So that's a 30 minute. That's subjective if it's been mitigated out of, but there you go. So you can see the three minute, you've got a balance in here and this candle still needs to be mitigated out of. So if you wanted to play, you can, I mean, if you wanted to come all the way down to this three minute, you could. Um, that would definitely lower your risk. Three minute open. And then we had the 30 minute open right here. 
right? Um, so those are the those are the two plays that you could play off of. <clears throat> I actually now looking at it like this, I'm not even looking at this four hour one. Um, I mean, I'll leave it up there, but I'm, I'm more, I'm more looking at that, that 30 minute open. And then if you want to take the 15 minute open, it's there for it. Um, <clears throat> that would accomplish two things, right? Grab liquidity from here and here, mitigate out of this last down candle and then run it up to that 1.09 hole number. And that'll give you about an eight and a half to one. So that's, that's something I'd be looking at. Now, <clears throat> it's, it's pretty cut and dry. If, if this stop, if we get stopped out on, on here, um, I 100% believe that we are definitely coming down, right? So just look for a selling position. You know, if, if this just shoots straight down like this, just wait for a mitigation play, you know? Um, there, there are some... You know, I, I'd be looking right in here to mitigate out of, you know, you can see what, you know, this happens every time with news, what's going on, right? It's building liquidity on both sides, enticing buyers and sellers. So just look to see what happens at the news. If, if we do go higher, right? If we do go higher because of news, all right, um, I would be very weary if, if we go, if we break this high, then I'm okay still taking this buy setup. But if we come up and say we, we mitigate off of this candle right here, right? If it comes up, mitigates, and then starts to drop, I would not be looking to buy this, okay? I would not be looking to buy this. I would instead look to get a mitigation play and just start attacking these lows, all right? These lows right here and these lows right here. Uh, those were those would be my areas of focus, and from where price is right now, we're looking at about 220 pips. All right, um, so that's that's what I would be looking at. So if that if that makes sense, you know, um, you know, wait, just look to see if you're going to be up for London session or if you're going to wait till New York session. Just look to see what happens. Okay, if price does not break this high, right? If price does not break this high on the news. All right, but it does come up and mitigate out of a position up here, out of a candle. All right, then do not buy it because it's clear what it's doing is it is is mitigating out of this buy so that it can come down and sell off. All right. Um, now, if it does not say on the news, right? Say on the news, we come down, we hit right here at twelve thirty, and then we start to take off. Then just work an entry in. You know, find find the next down candle and work an entry off of that. You know, you might not get that tight stop loss of like eight, nine, 13 pips. You might have to do a 25 pip stop, but at least you know where the target is. Okay. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. That's, that's what I'm personally going to be looking at. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to get up for, you know, sometime during London session, maybe at 3 a.m., maybe at four, I'll, I'll get up and uh, just take a quick peek, see what's going on. And if there's a, a potential entry, that's what I'll take, okay? So I'll send this out to you guys. But like I said, if price does not break this high, if it does take this liquidity, if it jumps up, but does not break this high, okay? And mitigates out of a candle in here, then don't take this buy, all right? All right, there's that. Okay, um, so I was looking at Eurochef, um, but I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very interested in this uh, right now. Um, I, I, I'm interested in selling this, um, but it's, it's nowhere near ready, right? I mean, you can see, right, we, we have some nice equal lows right here, okay? nice equal lows. We have tons of imbalance, right? So this, this is going to be a long, I mean, we're talking, you know, 200, almost 260 pips, right? Um, but what I'm looking at is I want, I want these equal highs to get taken and it, and it looks like it's going to happen right now. Okay. 
uh, which means my ECAD should be in, in higher profits right now, but let's see. So I can delete this because this is gonna get run right now. Um, all right, so you can see, right, we have liquidity. I want this to get run. So this is what I'm looking for on EuroCAD, right? I'm sorry, on, on EuroChef. So I want on the one hour time frame, I want this to happen. I want us to pop up, grab liquidity, okay? Then I want us to come back down, however it does it, whether it does it like this, right? As slow as can be, or it gets us one big move and breaks structure on the one hour time frame. So I want it to break right here. All right. Then I just wait and find the candle to mitigate off of, and then we're down. Okay. That's what I'm looking at uh, for eChef. It's, it's, um, come on, open up. There we go. So I'm waiting for a break of structure right here. Um, and I want that, that high to get taken. All right. This has been, right. This is at a key level. You can see it's actually mitigating out of this position in here. Okay. This was that last, you know, this was a, a last up candle before it just melted, right? So this was an institutional FU candle that took liquidity, that took everyone out of the market on the daily time frame. Okay. On the one hour, if you go back to it, you can see, right? Equal highs came up. And then it's never been essentially mitigated out of on the smaller time frame, So that's what this is doing right now. So I'm not looking to call the top, right? I'm not looking to be the first one to the, to the party on this. I am simply going to uh, just wait. And like I said, like I drew it out, right? Wait for the break of structure, okay? I'm sorry, wait for the liquidity to get taken wait for it to break structure and then just find the candle to play off of. Okay. So, you know, if, if hypothetically, if this, right, if this was like the break of structure, right. If this was the break of structure, then I would look for an entry like in here. Okay. Look for an entry in here. Um, you know, whether it be like at the, at the open or at 50%, stop loss above the, off the wick, and then I would run it down, okay? So that's what I'm looking for, Euro CHF. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those that it, it's, in, it's definitely in need of a correction, and it's got a lot of liquidity to the downside. You know, if we don't get a break of structure, just like on, on Euro odd, right? Just like Euro odd, where I was waiting here, where the heck was it? Uh, I think I deleted it, but where I was waiting in here for a break of structure and it never gave it to us, you know, um, then I'm, I'm not going to, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get into a trade until that break of structure happens. All right. So that's what I'm waiting on Eurochef, you know, and then obviously it's just clear, you know, you could see all of the, you know, I mean, it's, it's got tons of liquidity, right? Down in here, down in here. So I'll be looking for that. Um, I'm actually going to put my alert right here at alert. Okay, break of structure. Um, now gold, gold. I am I'm a little ticked off with on gold. I'll tell you that. Um, and I'm even more ticked off now because it just gave us the entry. Son of a gun. All right. Well, we'll get to it here in a second, man. So I was trying to sell gold today, and I actually took it off of. What was it a five minute open? That's what I took it off of. I went off the five minute candle, right? You can see we were London session going into 5 a.m. This is where I got into the market right here. Okay. So I went off this five minute candle. Stops were just above the high, right? Um, went into a little bit of drawdown and then I went into some profit, right? Uh, let's see. So the play I had was this. Stops just above the high. I was at one point in about three, three to one, uh, you know, or three percent profit. I was at. Um, I was targeting these lows, and then these lows, right? 
So I was at break even. I did move it one. Uh, I did go one um, percent in profit. Obviously, you can see the market came back, took me out of the market, um, broke all of these highs. I, I don't understand. You know, I have to look and dig deep as to why it did that. Um, you know, broke the highs and then ultimately just shattered my stupid take profits, right? Um, this would have been a, a really nice trade. Um, and then ultimately you can see what happened, right? So it was building structure, building structure, building structure. And now it just came back out and mitigated out of this one hour candle. Okay. So, and actually I, I think we could probably find what candle this mitigated out of. Let's see. So this came down to there. So I was looking for an entry off the um, off this one hour stops just below the the low. Yeah, so you can see it's actually, it's going to be right in here. It went right into this imbalance. You can see this imbalance right here on the one minute time frame. It went right into it. Um, so now on gold, I'm still bullish on gold. I think it's going to continue up. I think this was just a, a really nice entry for anybody that did catch it. Um, I personally... I personally want to see if we're going to get any mitigation in here. So let's just see. This had to have been a. Looking to see where a position needs to get mitigated out of. So that's been mitigated out of. I would like to see maybe potentially an entry off of here. I'd like to see if it returns to like 1723. Um, and if it does, that there may be a potential entry to take into. Like I I'm 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 a hundred percent bullish on this. You know, I mean, risking, you're risking 22 pips. You know, actually no, risking 34 pips. That's the setup I would play, right? Um, that's the setup I would play. And I'd be, I'd be targeting, you know, like 17. Yeah, I'd be targeting up here like 1753 and then looking at 1765. I think I think we are going, this may be the move for us to go higher. Um, it just sucks that we missed out on, I missed out on this because I had the right bias. I just, I got stopped out of profit. This was one of those frustrating ones today. Um, okay, so that's that's what I'm looking at for gold. I haven't really traded gold a lot lately just because the spreads and it was just acting a fool. Um, but this setup was pretty clean. Um, I am looking at least to the very minimum, taking it back up to the highs. And that would be, you know, about a six and a half to one ROI. So I, I would be, I am looking for it to go a little higher. Um, the, I don't know if you guys saw the Bitcoin thing I sent out last week, but I was looking for these lows to get run. And that sucker did it. Look at that. I didn't have my pending order just because I was looking to take it up to these highs here. So, but it did. It came right back. It came right into the 15 minute, I mean, to the T 15 minute uh, candle. Um, and then, um, you know, I personally think we're, we're going to start coming back down. I, I think on Bitcoin, we're going to come down at like 7,800 in here. We're going to come into here. But you know, I, I'm not trading it as much. Let's uh, let's get into the indices real quick. Let me look at oil. So oil, 
I should have been holding my damn oil. That's what I should have been doing. Oil is going to come into here. We're going to see $40 on oil again. Um, this has just been trucking up and up and up. And as the lockdowns and, you know, quarantines and everything have been uh, easing, uh, you can just see that, you know, we've been just printing bullish candles. So um, I'm really not seeing anything for an entry. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing the last entry that I took was down here and I took it to these equal highs. So um, until, until we get one of those institutional candles, um, I mean, realistically, let's see if we got anything. Let me see. Mitigated out of, mitigated out of, has not been mitigated out of. So on this one hour time frame, I mean, we do have this here at 3344, right? 3344 has not been mitigated out of. Um, and there is some, there is some nice imbalance right in here. Um, that may be, that may be an entry worthwhile. Um, actually, now that I'm looking at it, I may put an alert, right? Um, I may put an alert on this. Let's see. So I'm going to add this to my watch list as well. All right. That may be something. Um, oil, oil, uh, the oil numbers come out tomorrow. We'll, we'll see, you know, um, let me see if there's, if these are equal lows. Yep. I mean, we do have equal lows here. All right. Um, I mean, there's nothing to say that this thing's going to come down here this week, but I am going to have it. I'm going to have the alert there. Um, you can see that's what happened here, right? You can see all the equal lows right here. This was your FU candle to grab the liquidity to close out the imbalance, right? See this big candle closed out the imbalance there, ran up. Um, I wonder if that was mitigated out of, let's see. Yeah, that was, that was. So I, I would also be looking in this area here for an entry. Let's just see. One forty-five minute thirty. Twenty-five. There's that ten minute. The only thing I don't like about this is you, you've got equal lows, you know, these, these equal lows should, should get run. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not in a rush to trade oil. Um, you know, I would like to see if it comes back down there, you know, and if it does, you know, that, that'd be a great setup. If it does before it closes the gap, I mean, we're talking about a, almost a 20 to one ROI, uh, depending on your broker. I know my broker FX choice doesn't charge you swap fees. So you can hold, I'm still actually holding a very small position from, I think it was in here, where was it? Oh, no, no, it wasn't here, hold on. Uh, I'm still holding a very, very small position. I think it's like a 0.02 lot. <laughs> I'm still holding from this move right here. So, I mean, it's up something like, I don't know, like 30 bucks or something like that on the 0.02 lot, but it, it is, uh, actually, it's more than that. It's, I think it's almost a little over a hundred bucks now. Let's see, what was this? So we're talking, yeah, it's, it's a little over a hundred bucks is what I've got in profit on it. So, and I'm just going to keep holding it until we get up here, but I would like to scale in on another entry. And that, uh, that one hour looks, looks pretty decent if we can get it to come back down into it. So. All right, so that's oil. Now let's get into the indices. So 
Let's talk about XPX, right? Um, ended up playing uh, this morning. Got in off of this candle right here on this position, all right? Did go, what was it? Six, almost 17 uh, points in profit before it ended up coming back down. I, I closed out, I think at like five points. But then I, I took another position off of this candle right here, which was the, uh, was it the five minute? So you can see the five minute imbalance. Uh, that's what I took it off. I took it off the six minute. So I took it off the six minute imbalance. Price came right in there. My risk was five, almost five and a half points. Uh, and I just took it right back up to these highs and I got out. Um, you know, obviously it went a whole lot further. You can see, right, we've we've made a new high on SPX. So I, I do continue to see this going bullish through Friday, all right, through Friday. Um, I do anticipate us getting up to, you know, like the potential 31... 40 area, you know, these highs up in here, I do see us getting up in there. Um, you know, so for tonight, I'm really not looking for much. I will look to catch a pullback, right? So I'll be looking. Right, I will be looking, you know, off the one hour, right, we have imbalance right here. Okay. Um, all right. So the, the question is what's been mitigated out of, right? So we have two areas that we've, we got to look at. We've got to look at in here, right? And then we've, we've got to look at ideally in here. Okay. Um, so we have the 30 minute, 30 minute open is right here. You can see, right, 30 minute imbalance that needs to get mitigated. This was, I think, what, 340, yeah, 330 candle. This was like the last 15 minutes of trading today. It, it just, it did the shenanigans. Um, you can see, let's see. Um, tell you what, I think I like that 30 minute, the 30 minute would only be a risk of seven points, right? Um, that may be something I'd be looking at, especially going into like New York open. Uh, I'd be looking for that drop down to buy it up at New York open. I do want to see in here though, if we've mitigated out of this position. So we have not mitigated, right? Here's the five minute. That's the five minute. We potentially could come all the way down there as well. Um, yeah, so these are the two plays I'd be looking at. I'd be looking at playing off of in this area or this area, okay? Um, you know, you can see we do have, right, equal lows right here, okay? We do have equal lows built. Uh, that's going to give us a nice catalyst. That's why I'd be looking to trade this. So the way I, I'm going to play it tomorrow morning or maybe even London session, we'll see, we'll see when I get up if it's where it's at. But I would be playing off of here. And if I take the loss here, I'm just going to turn it right around, have a setup setting here. Because if we if it drops below here, it's going to come down to here to mitigate out. So, and then I'll just take it up. And then when we do get to Friday, I'll be tar I want to target these lows down here. And then I I do think where was it? No, all this has been mitigated out of. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so I, I would like to see us uh, get down into these areas of equal lows, right? Without a doubt, we, you know, these are going to get hit eventually. So we are going to have to return to these two areas to close it out. And you can see I do have, what is this off the five minute? Uh, man, I know I labeled this thing. I labeled it today. Let's see. Is that the six minute? Yeah. Okay. So that's what it is. So you can already see where I'm looking to buy it up. This is going to be the six minute open. This is the last point that smart money is in drawdown um, before the big rise, right? So that's, that's where I'm going to be looking. Okay. You can see this huge, right? This huge drop. And then we just went on a tear from there. So they will need, we, we will need to come back down to 3027, right? 3027 is where we will be looking to come down to. Um, and that may be an area that I'm, I'm going to be looking to buy maybe next week. Okay. So the two, the two areas I'm looking at, you know, for London into New York is this 30 minute area right in here or this five minute area right in here. Okay. Sorry, I just had to, had to get some water. Um, anyone else catch the trade today on SPX? Gary, were you able to get in on it? All right, so um, here is the Dow, right? So I missed the Dow. I was looking... I was actually looking to take a freaking entry right in here off the five minute. Yeah. So I was looking off of this five minute right here to take a, an entry, you know, especially with these equal lows sitting right here. Um, right. You could see, you could see these equal lows. Um, I still think this trade setup is valid. Um, I ended up taking an entry today <clears throat> off this entry right here. So it was like right at 3.30, I got into the trade off 50% of this candle, stops just below the wick. And then um, my broker had a positive swap for US 30. So I actually made a couple bucks holding it over to the next day. Um, and then I just hit take profit. So when my alert went off that the uh, equal highs got hit, um, I did take take profit here. So that is done. I'm still looking potentially at this as an entry. And I'm also looking right here at this 15 minute candle. Okay. Um, I'm going to be more inclined to wait and see when we get closer to London and New York for the open. Um, I, I do think we are just going to, we, we just ran the highs, right? So I, I don't expect a lot of movement up. I do think that we're going to start doing just like we did last night, you know, down, up, right? And then at 9.30, we potentially are going to see that drop, let it carry up, um, and, and make some new highs. But what I'm, I'm personally looking at is I have right here, it's this H4. This is where I'm looking. I am looking March 4th. This H4 candle is where I'm looking for a reaction on price. And then you can see at 27, we'll call it 27,100, we have equal highs, okay? So I think if we can get, if we don't get, if we can get here Thursday, 27,100 on Thursday, um, this may give us the, the catalyst to sell off, okay? Um, I'm also going to be looking in here, right? I'm also going to be looking in here because this obviously is an institutional candle. Um, you know, uh, while I'm here, let's just look, let's just look, right? So 
this is where I think we're going to get our sell off for NFP. Um, potentially right there on the 30 minute. Right? That's potentially where we're going to get our sell off 27,462. All right. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on it. That's, I mean, obviously you can see, right? This was, if, if, if you're looking smart money, you know, just, it, it's, it's a pretty easy, you know, process, right? They bought up here to immediately just sell off, right? To just sell off from there. Um, and it was just a massive sell off from there. So that, that's kind of what I'm going to be looking at. Um, I do, I do continue. I mean, we do have uh, roughly what, um, about 1400 points to go up. So I'm, I'm definitely looking at this, you know, uh, for still some bullish momentum going up. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Do they, do they move uh, the same? Like volatility wise, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Just go back and look at it. Um, you know, I mean, we had what is this? Let's see. You know, Asian session they like to consolidate, but yeah, L London session and uh, the London crossover that five a.m. Eastern time to like seven a.m. There's always a nice little move, right? There's always a nice little move. Um, you took a Nas. Were you in a buy or a sell? Yeah, just remember, news is just the excuse, right? So, if if you if 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 a tweet caused yeah if, if a tweet caused um, price to come back to a certain point, it was for a reason, you know. Um, you just got to go back and, and look to see why, what, what, um, was it in here? Is this where the, the, uh, it stopped you out or what? Yeah. It was in that same exact area that you're at. Yeah. 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 So yeah. W watch, watch this. So I can tell you exactly why this happened because that's 50% of that candle. Yeah, because um, I was trading off of the break and retest, but I'm I'm looking to get more into the trade house way mm -hmm. of looking at it. Um, but yeah, looking back at it, that kind of was a mistake on my bad. I mean, on yeah. my end, sorry. Um, yeah, but yeah, I would, I would have bought it from there. Like that, this would have been the setup right here. So that would have been my setup. And I, I go to the candle close and then take it right up to the high. So, but yeah, it was, all that was, was just mitigating that candle. So, and that was on the one hour. So if you went to a 15 minute, I guarantee you it gave you some more opportunities. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, on this, on this 15 minute, you, you can see the liquidity just sitting right here. So this, this is going to be another, this will be another target area that they're going to want to come back down into. You can already see just the game plan, right? You can see the imbalance right here that they're going to have to mitigate. Um, Man, there's all kinds of imbalance in here. Yeah, I'm I'm personally, I'll tell you right now. So wherever NAS ends up, we're, we are going to make all-time highs on the NAS. I don't know if you guys have been looking at this, right? This was February 20th. This was the day the sell-off happened, right? This was an all-time high, right? The NAS has never been 97.59. So we are realistically, I mean, we're at what, 80 points from an all-time high on the NAS. Um, 9,800 is, is well within its reach. Um, but I do think, uh, or I should say, I know, <laughs> I know we will be coming down to mitigate out of some positions, right? We have equal lows, right? I can delete these. We have uh, these equal lows right here. And, uh, and these equal lows, I'll tell you right now, I've, I've already got this marked up. This is what I'm looking. This is going to be my next big buy on the, uh, on the NASDAQ. If you zoom in, right, you can see imbalance right here. Uh, imbalance, we have equal lows. 
We have a down candle, the last down candle before this all went up. I'm looking to play off of this 15 minute. You can go down, I think on a three minute, you can get a little lower with a, a, with a tighter crunch. But this is going to be one of those swing positions that I'm going to be holding. Um, I'm going to be, and lately my FX choice has been giving you positive swap for um, US 30 and for NASDAQ, not the S&P. So, but even if I hold it right back up to these highs, I mean, it'll be a nice little 12% run. Um, and just thinking how, how many days it only took a week to get that. So I'll, I'll I mean, this will be a 12% day for, you know, week for me just on this one trade, but that's, that's the kind of the target that I'm looking at. Uh, you can take these lows out and we have these lows here. So I, I personally, I haven't traded the NASDAQ much just because it's, it's been not following the correlation between the other two benchmarks. Um, however, I, I would be very, very leery of these equal lows right here. Okay. Pause. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they give you a credit. So if you go, what, if you're using MT4, just go to details under the, yeah, yeah under, under your, um, uh, your like watch list or whatever you want to call it. And it'll tell you what the, what the swap fees are, you know? So like you can come here and where's my, so for my, my, um, my Forex broker, right? These are the rule. It's called rollover or swap, however they want to deal with it. But each pair every day, this updates, right? So um, let me, yeah. So like us dollar, Swiss franc. So for shorts, you, you get charged six cents per $1,000 uh, or $1.54, uh, not 1,000, what is it? Um, I gotta, oh, what is it, 10K, that's what it is, right? So for every 10K position, um, you, you're, this is what you're getting charged, you know? So on USD Mexican, if you were long on it, you'd make $3.74 per 10K position or negative, if you were short, you'd have to pay that, you know? So sometimes this is what determines whether or not I'm going to close out a position. Um, uh, about two, three weeks ago, I was in a sell on UCAD on Friday. I didn't close it out because there was no swap fee. It was actually zero for a short. Um, so I didn't close it out. You know, I was in, I was in pretty good profits and stuff like that. So that, you know, it's always good to know what your, what your rollover or swap fee is. All right. Um, but on, on NASDAQ, I would just be very careful with NASDAQ because there's a lot of inefficiencies. Um, you know, you can, you can see the imbalance here on the 15. You can see, you know, if, if you are going to play off of it, um, I would potentially maybe look at, uh, at this area here. Um, Let's see, this was, yeah, I mean, we, we created this morning's drop at market close and then the take up, I mean, we created equal lows, you know, so I, I can guarantee you that these equal lows very shortly will get run. Um, and obviously I'm not looking to sell this, nothing, nothing about the indices right now tell you to sell, right? Nothing about this. Um, so I, I particularly wouldn't be looking to sell it. All right. Um, and Eurocad is just still screwing around. All right. It is, it is what it is. Um, you guys have anything you guys want to go over anything? Do you guys see anything? Like I said, I, I, it's only Tuesday. If, if you've been really just kind of like following the, the trade setups and the game plans, how we've been trading smart money uh, Mondays, uh, you know, really Mondays, I don't do anything other than the indices. And if there's something that I've held over from the weekend uh, tonight is when I really start to look at some stuff uh, that GU setup is, is really, uh, is really going to irritate me, but it's really what I was looking at. Same thing with EU. Um, I'm also looking at that. This is just that manipulation. I'd like to see that drop during London and maybe that London crossover is where we would be in a, in a good opportunity for a buy. Um, I would also like to see if by chance UCAD can break some structure. I would like to take it up. Um, I don't know why I was even looking at Chef JPY. I don't think I've ever traded this. Um, and then that Euro GBP. Euro GBP is the other one that I am looking at. Um, 
But other than that, that's kind of all I'm really looking at. Everything else is just like running away. Um, you guys, look, is anyone looking at anything particularly? I did have a question um, in regards to NAS and the other indice pairs. Um, one thing that Lou kind of mentioned was that um, NAS is kind of like the pioneer. It's kind of like the leader um, in terms of the three pairs. And when she starts moving, the other ones kind of follow suit with that. But I've noticed that NAS has been doing her own thing. That's why I've been like avoiding that pair altogether. But um, I did have a question. I did get on kind of late. I'm not sure if you went over gold. Um, uh, yep, I did, but we can do it again. So here's, uh, you said you were, you were talking, Luke was talking about it? Yeah, like he was talking about how in terms of NAS, US 30, and S&P 500, um, NAS is like the, the one that takes the lead, and then the other ones kind of mirror what NAS is doing. But like you mentioned before, I noticed that NAS is kind of doing its own thing. I'm not sure it's be, if it's because of NFP or because of news or Trump's tweets or whatever. But um, yeah, I've just, I've been trying to, um, to use that, but I've, like I said, I've noticed that it's kind of all over the place. So I, I try to avoid that pair altogether. So here, here's the only thing, <laughs> later Mike, have a good one, bro. Uh, here's the only thing I'll say. So Luke is very good at what he does, but he's not a very, um, uh, I'm trying to think how to put it. So uh, the answer is this, the, the three benchmark indices, right? Obviously, the NASDAQ is tech-driven, right? It's all the top 100 tech companies. So the NAS has been, and, and I don't know if you, you, you watched the, um, the Zoom that I did a couple times on leaders and laggards, but the NAS has been the leader um, for probably about a month, and the rest of them have been laggards. Okay. Um, hold on, bear with me. Okay, sorry. Um, and the rest have been laggards. So the the idea with the leader is that's the one you want to trade. The 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 I guess the area that we haven't had confluence in is because NAS has is tech driven and the fundamentals have changed. And it really has nothing to do with Trump's tweets. It's more what's going on on the front. You know, so what is Apple doing? What is IBM doing, you know, what is, you know, what's going on with the tech industry. And obviously the reason NAS has been so bullish where other, the other two have been kind of like uh, dragging. And what I mean by dragging is if you just look at them, right? So let's go to equities, um, right? Like, like I said, NAS is getting ready to make an all-time high, right? We've, we've literally taken away all of this stuff uh, that from, the, from the drop. But if you look at US 30, we're, we're, I mean, I think we're just right at 50. Now we're at like 61%. Let's see. All right. Yeah. So we're in between 61 and 71% on US 30. And we are probably about 71% on S&P. S&P will catch up. Okay. Um, but the reason we're, we're so bullish on NAS is just think about what's going on, right? Everyone's at home. Everyone, Zoom has been pushed. You know, um, everyone's working from home. Schools are, are working from home. So tech industry has just been flourishing. And that's why you're getting this huge bullish, this bullish momentum, you know? Um, I mean, for a while there, I was liking uh, the, the setups on NAS. Um, you know, I mean, setups are setups, you know, I mean, you could see all day where, where this is going, you know, um, you know, I'll tell you right now, I, I, I have the buy limit set right down in here on NAS because it will come down here. We will get the entry off this mitigation point and we're going to take it up, you know, whether, however long this takes, I don't care. I mean, the buy limit's non-expiring. So I'll just, I'll sit there and I'll wait for it. Um, but yeah, so going, going to gold here, going to gold real quick. I mean, I'm bullish on it. You know, we, I was trying to sell it off. Um, you know, it did take out liquidity, which is great. It did go right into this two-hour candle. Um, I'm personally, son of a gun, I'm personally, I've got another order. I am in a buy. I got into a buy here. Um, I am in a buy. I'm just going to, I'm holding it. And I am looking, what do we say, like five minute, I think? No, we are looking. Three minute. Two minutes, one minute. As soon as I find it, give me a sec. 
this somewhere in here needs to get mitigated out of. That's what it is. So that six minute may possibly be it. Yeah, that's six minute. So that, that would be my next entry on gold would be this six minute right here. And then stops would be just below the wick. Yeah. So about 23 pips is what I'm looking to, to, you know, to, to risk on it. And I am looking to take this back up. Okay. Um, I would be looking this five minute open right here is an area that I want to see a reaction, whether or not we are going to sell off from there. But regardless, you know, I mean, even if you want to just take it to the imbalance here, you're still at a, almost a four and a half to one ROI. Um, you know, but I ultimately am, am bullish. I do want to see it come up, run the, the liquidity sitting right up here. And then also these highs, you know, back from the middle of May. So that, that's personally what I'm looking at uh, for gold. Like I said, I'm, I'm currently in the buy on it. And, uh, and I'm, I'm going to add another position right in here. So that's, that's what I have. Um, does anybody have anything else they're looking at? Yeah, I like entered the buy, but I got stopped out with that wick right there. So yeah. I think I'm just probably going to re-enter then. Yep, just wait, wait for it to come back. It's going to have to come back mm -hmm. and mitigate that, yeah. uh, that six-minute candle. So, oh. and all, all this was, was I think, I think it was like off the one minute. No, it's gotta be off a second time frame. That's what that was. Let's see. Yeah, it's off a second time frame. That came down and mitigated out of that. Um, yeah, Mike already got off. Otherwise I tell him to look to see, cause he's got the seconds. But yeah, that's, um, yeah, it sucks. I, um, I, I missed that two hour entry. What time was this at? This was at like 11 o'clock. That's when my internet was on the fritz. Cause I would have, I would have taken the, the entry right off this and that would have been an easy, that would have been an easy hundred pips. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking to take this higher and at least to the, to the imbalance off this H1 candle. So, but that's, that's pretty much all I have. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to rush anything. You know, the setups are going to come. Um, you know, the, just let them play out. Don't rush it. Once you're in the trade, just manage it. You know, um, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't overdo it. You know, just let it play out. Um, you know, like I said, this, uh, I've been sitting now going on like 12 hours in this EuroCAD. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. It's at break even. If it breaks me out, it breaks me out. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna to, to really, uh, lose sleep over it. I did, I did want to look at the scanner, but no, I don't see anything worthy of take. Like I said, these, these yen pairs are just, they, they just keep extending the scans. Um, so I'm, I'm not until the Japanese futures um, start to show some, uh, some strength. I'm, I'm not looking to do any of this. So there's really no, there's really no scans, you know? Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing. Yeah, nothing. So, alrighty. Well, if you guys have nothing else, um, I will. I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna, uh, like I said, I'm gonna try and get up for London session just to see. Uh, yesterday, this morning, I got up for London and caught a couple good moves. So, I'm gonna do the same. Alrighty. You guys have a good night. Enjoy. I will. Uh, I'll see everyone later, man. Have a good one. Enjoy. <laughs>